Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Salat ayu al-ahabba Is one of the most important Deeds that we can do as we've mentioned On countless occasion we've mentioned the hadith Of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the best deed that you can do. And of course, this is the best deed after Tawheed. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Salat ala waqtiha, meaning prayer in its time. So with that being the most important deed after your Aqidah, after your creed, purifying your belief system, making sure that you know Allah is one and He's the only one worthy of worship, and that he has divine names and attributes to worship him by, subhanahu wa ta'ala, unique to him alone, tabarak wa ta'ala, those sifat. Once you know that, and you realize the importance of salat, the prayer, then it's incredibly important that you act upon the salat. And that as the Prophet sallallahu said, salat ala waqtiha, that prayer during its time, that you pray the salat during its time. Some of our brothers and sisters, they always sleep through Salat al-Fajr. That's their habit. And it's a terrible habit and it's one of the signs of hypocrisy. It's a sign of the hypocrites. That does not mean that they are hypocrites. But they have to be cautious of falling into hypo hypocrisy and having those characteristics. So... It is not befitting that a Muslim should be late for the, the time for Fajr. If they prayed in the masjid, this is best for the men. But if it is difficult for them to pray in the masjid due to their work situation or the, the, the distance of the masjid or what have you, then at least make sure that every day you're praying it during your, its time. Wherever you're established in the Salat, that you're praying it during its proper time. This is the characteristic of the believer. But the characteristic of the hip hypocrite is the one who sleeps through the prayer all the time and says, oh, I have difficulty getting up for Fajr. I can't pray Fajr. Oh, it's so hard for me. Oh, I always pray Fajr at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or, or whatever when it's time for work. No, that is not difficult because it is very easy for all of us to have an alarm clock. Alarm clocks are everywhere. I'm sure 90 percent if not a whatever percentage of the people who are even listening to this have a cell phone have a mobile phone or what have you and it has an alarm on it so it is not difficult to set your alarm because if someone were to give to tell you that you would be receiving a check for a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars tomorrow morning at the time of fedger you would be awake even before that time waiting standing as we should be for the salat Standing and awaiting, not out of laziness. And may Allah forgive us all of our shortcomings. The Prophet ﷺ said, Salat ala waqtiha. That that is the, the, the best deed that you can do. One of the best deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praying the prayer during its time. I wanted to look at something very important with regards to the Fajr prayer as well. And the time for Fajr. Is also, it's very important to never miss the sunnah of the Fajr prayer. Which sunnah should we not miss, Abdurrahman? Jazakallah khairan. So strive to make the sunnah of the Fajr prayer. The Prophet ﷺ never missed that. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So how many rakat is there for the sunnah of the Fajr prayer, Abdurrahim? Four. Two. Sunnah. Two. Two. Fajr prayers, how many rakat? Two. Two. Good. And uh, the sunnah for Fajr is two. Okay? So that means when the time for salat enters, then you get up, you prepare yourself for prayer, wash yourself for prayer, and make the two rakat. As long as the time for Fajr has entered. Then, if you're able to go to the masjid, 
then you go to the masjid and you know, in time for the, the congregational Fajr prayer. If not, if you don't go to the masjid, at least make sure you pray that sunnah. Then after that, pray your uh, Fajr prayer. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, لم يكن نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على شيء من نوافلي أشد تعهدا منه على ركتي الفجر رواه بخاري ومسلم وفي لفل مسلم ركتا الفجر خير من الدنيا وما فيها In these two narrations of this very important hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The first narration is the narration in Bukhari Rahimahullah ta'ala ala imam Bukhari. That Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummu Mu'mineen, she said that there wasn't a thing, I mean there wasn't a something that was more, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more consistent from the nawafil, meaning those extra prayers. Uh, more more diligently than the two rakat, the two uh, sunnah uh, rakat of Fajr. And that was the narration in Bukhari. And in the narration in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet wasallam said, Rakata al-Fajr, khayran min dunya wa ma fiha. That two prayer units of Fajr is better than the dunya wa ma fiha. It's better than everything in this world and what this world contains. Letting us know the importance of not just the Fajr prayer, but even the sunnah. So always strive to do what, Abdurrahman? What should we strive to do then? To not just pray Fajr, but what? To pray the sunnah. Pray the sunnah of Fajr. Nam barakallahu feek. Always strive to pray the sunnah of Fajr. Pray your sunnah prayers. For Fajr, it is rakatain. It is two prayer units. Some of the things we benefit from this hadith is first, is that it is sunnah mu'akira, that it is uh, uh, v recommended and you will receive reward for praying those two units uh, in addition to the Fajr prayer, before the Fajr prayer. And that it is not befitting of a Muslim to miss those those uh, rakatay of Fajr. That you should never, that should be something that is just a part of your life. And if you miss it, you can make qada, you can make it up after the, uh, you know, during the time of Salat al-Duha or other times when it's permissible to pray. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, is it shows us the greatness and the benefit of the Salat al-Fajr and the Sunnah of Fajr. And that the Prophet وسلم, said it is better than everything in this world. Showing us that it is incredibly great. So never miss the Fajr prayer and never miss those Sunnahs. Always try to make your Sunnah of Fajr. It's very easy. Two rakat and then... Uh, then pray your Fajr prayer. Bidnillah ta'ala. The third benefit from this hadith is that the Prophet sallallahu it illustrates for us that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was very diligent and more diligent than anyone else, of course, in praying those uh, in, in, in his worship. In his worship alayhi salatu wasalam. And Those are some of the benefits of this hadith. And the last thing that the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is by being weak with regards to the Sunnah, by not praying the Fajr prayer, or, or not praying the Sunnah of the Fajr prayer, it also uh, is evidence that a person is weak in Iman, that they're weak in their religion in general, weak in their deen, and they're weak. In, 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 in the sacredness of the religion and guarding the boundaries. They're weak in that. Why? Because they, they can't do the simple sunnah which the Prophet ﷺ was stern about. Alayhi salatu wasalam. 
and that they are weak in adhering to the khair and in trying to adhere to goodness because they cannot do something simple like that which is a simple act of ibadah that we all can do and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our shortcomings and bless us with al nafia wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutaqabbilan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam